Hi everyone and welcome back. So yesterday at our farm we were incredibly busy um, because it's springtime and we raise our own chickens for meat for our freezer. And so when you think about spring, you think about these cute little baby chicks and that's often the time that's the indication that, you know, chicks are hatching. There's different types of chicks that actually exist. There's chicks that are raised and meant for laying eggs on your farm and, and giving you egg production every day. And then there's chicks that are specifically bred and designed to be meat. And so they're called meat birds. And so yesterday we processed all of our meat birds. We filled our freezer with chicken for us for pretty much the entire next year. But the next step after we've processed all of those chickens is that I like to also um, utilize the leftover pieces from our chicken that we've processed to make homemade chicken stock. Now, um, I'm calling it chicken stock today because I am not going to be adding in salt and pepper and a lot of seasoning to the recipe that I'm making. And that's because it will make it more versatile for me to use in various recipes going forward throughout the entire year, since I'm going to put this in the freezer and save it for long term use. Now, it could be called chicken broth if you went ahead and decided to go ahead and season the recipe. And I'll show you where and when to do that in today's recipe. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So for today's recipe for making the chicken stock, I have three base ingredients that I'm going to use to help add depth to the flavor of the stock. I've got carrots, which I will peel and chop. I have a yellow onion. You could use white, you could use red, use what you have. I have yellow onions, which I'm also going to peel and rough chop. And then I also have fresh celery. Now, this is celery that we've grown in our garden. You'll notice that the stems aren't quite as large as the ones that you see in the store. For this recipe, that is okay. Now, we grow our own celery as much as we can. I love celery because once you plant it, it's one of those um, perennials where it will keep coming back year after year. You can let it go to seed and it will make more. And it's one of those things that you can actually start with the celery you get from the store. So when you get celery from the store, it comes in a large stalk. And when you go to use it, a lot of people chop off the end of the stalk and they just simply throw it away. But if you place that into a bowl of water, it will actually start to regrow. And you can see I have one here. And so if I ever do have to get one from the store because I've used all of what I've got in the garden or I don't have enough, I will actually save that base from the store. I will let it sit in the water. It will start to grow roots. You can see them starting to grow here. And then it will start to grow up from the center. And after this guy gets a little bit taller and a little bit hardier, I'll just go ahead and plant them straight in the dirt and it will continue to produce for me year after year after year with just a little bit of water and some TLC. Okay, so for our fresh ingredients, I'm gonna go ahead and peel these carrots here. And you'll notice that the quantity of what I'm preparing today is greater than the quantity that's shown on the picture at the beginning of the video. And this is because I am preparing enough chicken stock for the entire year. So my chicken stock today is going to be spread. All these ingredients are going to be spread between three different crock pots. Um, now, if you're making it for yourself, you can certainly do it in just one crock pot and do one batch. It just depends on how much um, chicken leftovers that you have that you'd like to use to make your stock or your broth. Um, since we have a lot, I'll be making a lot. I'm also going to be using what I have on hand. So I don't have a lot of full-size carrots, but one thing that I do have left over from Easter is I have a ton of pre-peeled baby carrots. So you'll see me adding those in, in as far as each of these recipes. So I've pre-peeled my carrots. I'm just going to go ahead and prep my onions. I'm going to cut the top and the bottoms off and then I'll cut it in half and then that'll allow me to easily peel the onion 
And then from here, I'm simply also going to just rough chop this and cut it in half. And I'm going to continue doing this for all the onions that I have prepared. Now for my celery, it has a lot of leaf to it. Because this is going in into the crock pots and it's going to get strained out later, it doesn't matter much if I leave the leaves on or if I take them off. I have some very happy hens that would really love to have these leaves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prep these stalks of celery um, that I clipped this morning from the garden. I left the roots in so it can continue to grow back. And I'm gonna give my chickens some treats with these celery leaves. So now that I've taken all the leaves off my celery, I'm just going to go ahead and give it rough chop, you know, one and a half to two inch sections. Again, this is all going to be strained from the liquid later. So if you want to have it bigger, you can have it bigger. All right. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and start to put some of these ingredients into our crock pot. Okay, so for each batch that you are hoping to make, you're gonna add one whole rough chopped onion. And get a little peel in there, just grab it. You're gonna add um, as many carrots as you want. Typically, it's two to three whole carrots per batch. Um, I have some whole carrots, and as I mentioned earlier, I have some baby carrots left over from Easter, so I'm just gonna take a handful of those and add them in. Doesn't have to be exact. And then you're going to add your celery. Your celery is going to be anywhere from three to four whole stalks, rough chopped. Again, mine is a little bit smaller in the stem. So of all the celery that I cut up, I'm adding about a third of it into this crock pot because I'm doing three total batches today. At this point, I'm ready to add the chicken that I have. Now, ways in which you can get chicken if you're not processing your own. Let's say you go to the store and you pick up a rotisserie chicken, your family eats all the pieces off of it. You can actually repurpose that carcass that's left over to do the same process. So you can get chicken that way. Um, you can actually go to your butcher and ask if they have any carcasses that you could retain for purposes of making stock. That's another way that you can do this process. Um, but again, I have a lot of my own. I've also done this enough times to know how many and how much fit into one crock pot. So I'm going to be adding today to my crock pot a lot more than you probably would if you're making this for yourself. So today I'm going to be putting three carcasses into this crock pot, uh, plus the neck and the tips of the wings that I used um, when I was packaging up individual parts and pieces. Again, you don't have to utilize this much, but this is what I'm putting in today. Now you'll also notice that I have not pre-cooked any of these. So there is a method that you can take these, you can roast them in the oven, and you can let them sort of let all their juices release. And that works, that's fine. Um, it will add a little bit of depth of flavor to your stock or your broth, but quite frankly, I don't have that much time. And I haven't really noticed a significant taste difference. So I'm just gonna add these in as they are. And then the last step to this is you are going to cover your chicken completely with water. Now, if your chicken rises to the top, just cover it as much as you can. You may need to get several pitchers of water to fill your crock pot, but 
go ahead and do the best that you can to fill your crock pot because this liquid is ultimately going to be what's turned into your chicken stock or your chicken broth. Now, I mentioned earlier, I'm making stock. So at this point, I'm not going to add any salt. I'm not going to add any pepper. Some people like to add various different flavoring powders, um, powdered thyme, powdered garlic, uh, powdered onion. I'm not going to add any of that in here. When I use it in recipes later, if I need any of those flavorings, I'll add those later. So this is going to be a true stock. And then you're ready to go ahead and put your lid on. You're gonna set this on high for a minimum of four hours. If you're headed out to work for the day and you want it to go all day, that is not a problem. The longer, the better, because you'll get more intense flavoring. So this is gonna go for a minimum of four hours on high. Um, and then it'll be ready to go ahead and strain everything out so you get just the liquid. Okay, so the four hours has passed. You can see that whatever meat that remained on the bones has cooked. At this point, it's okay to go ahead and remove out all of the larger bones in the carcass. If you have meat left over, you can certainly scrape that off, shred it, and utilize that for other recipes. And we're gonna use a ladle to go ahead and strain the liquid through a fine mesh strainer so that we can then have our chicken stock. Now, once you've scooped out all of the liquid, at this point, you can go ahead and let your stock or your broth cool until it's room temperature, and then it's ready to go ahead and package. Now, I package it in roughly about two cup portions, and that's because that's typically what most recipes call for is chicken broth or chicken stock in two cup increments. And so I'll put them into a freezer safe container. I'll divide this all up into as many freezer safe containers as it takes. And then it's good in my freezer for up to the whole next year. And there you have it. It's that simple. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make chicken stock with me today. Again, remember, the only difference between stock and broth is, is that your broth has a lot more seasoning to it. Salt, pepper, and whatever other flavorings you want to add to it. Till next time.